All right, welcome back. We're uh, going to jump into some of the philosophical fundamentals now. Um, basically, some of the concepts, some of the ideas that have been at the foundation of my own process and my own development of, you know, my sound, so to say. Because for me, it, uh, yeah, the music is very much tied to my life and my my own process outside of music and the things that are important to me, the things that I'm exploring and, and uncovering and and how I'm deepening my understanding of who I am and, and what's going on here in, in the universe. And, and so I think the first point to just bring awareness to uh, for you uh, is intention. So why are you making music? Uh, it's really important to be clear about these deepest motivations because this becomes your North Star. Um, for me, my intention with this music is that it's deeply transformational, that it provides an experience for people that opens up some kind of revelation about who they are and what is their role in the universe. and. Maybe there's more clarity, more peace, more understanding. I'm, I'm coming at this with a very deep intention. I'm not interested in entertainment and just kind of, oh, let's have a good time. Obviously, I want us to have a, a, a good time, have a positive experience. But through that, I really want there to be meaning and, and depth and all of these things arising out of that experience and that interaction with the music. And this has been my North Star, you know, it's been my guiding principle when I start to create. That's always present as far as, okay, how do I go deeper? How, how can this be more of an impact on people? And, and really it's, it's turned around on to myself because if I am having my own deep process with that, with that music, then I know that there's going to be something deep available there for someone else. So this is something to really give some thought to. And if you're not clear on it already, now might be a good time to just stop the, the video and, you know, start to write and, and really examine why you're attracted to doing this. You know, what are you looking for? What, what are you hoping to, um, to impact in the world with, with what you're doing through sound, through music? So with this being said, and, and with the establishment of a North Star, it's also super important to be really present with what's happening right now, you know, to recognize this as an unfolding process, that there's not a destination that we're going to arrive to, that everything will be complete. And really that we focus on the, on the journey rather than okay I'm going to I need to try and finish this track rather rather than having that mentality really just being so immersed in the process of creation that you forget that you're even making a track you're just doing something that you love to do and you know this this relates to some earlier experiences I had in the first few years of my own process where I would get really into that kind of experience where I was so immersed in the music and, and just really something powerful was coming through. And then I would start to imagine sharing that with other people. And, oh, this is going to be amazing to, I wonder what, how people are going to receive this. And that would immediately shut off my channels. It would, it would stop that creative flow because I would start projecting into the future and imagining what that track will be when it's done and how it's going to be when I play it out. Um, so I didn't even really realize I was doing this. It took me some years before I kind of started to catch myself and realize, oh, wow, when I start to think like that, I'm not really in the flow anymore. Um, so super important, very, very fundamental, you know, really treat Treat your whole musical process as the end, not as a means to an end, not as a reason to 
you know, have more recognition or some of these things that, you know, we're all looking for, whether consciously or, or unconsciously, but that you're really intentional about this being for itself. You, you're just making music because you love to make music. And if you don't love what you're doing, then maybe you should be doing something else. Or maybe you should try a different approach. And that's really also at the foundation of what I'm sharing with you in this process is follow your heart. Really listen to what you want to do and do that as much as possible. And, and you know, as I'm talking about my own process with the, the journey and the destination, it relates to the next point here of this also being a process of, of uh, self-discovery. Uh, this because we're going so deep into the creative process, it ends up being a mirror for our, our own lives and the energy that we're exposed to, the energy that we're cultivating in our lives, the feelings that we're moving through, the thoughts we're having, and these tracks, these, these pieces of music that end up coming through us and, and landing can end up being these blueprints to previous experiences and moments in our lives. And through these processes, as I realized with, with uh, focusing on uh, finishing a track and what that would be like, that helped bring more awareness to bringing that into my whole life, not just the, the process of creating music, but just in life in general, trying to be more present with whatever is happening and not being concerned about whatever I'm doing being a means to an end, but being feeling complete with the moment, feeling complete with whoever is around me, whatever is happening right now, or wherever I am, the environment, that this is enough, that I'm, I'm just, I feel connected right now in this moment. And I already kind of touched on, on this next point of imprinting our energy into the music, but this has become an idea that I, I share often now. And, um, I think gives a better understanding as to what music is and the capacity it has to impact the, the people who receive it. So essentially part of my intention is, is, you know, while really the main aspect of my intention is, is to take people on this deep journey. And I have found that if I can go on a deep journey myself while I'm creating the music, that whatever I'm experiencing, the emotions, the, the higher states of consciousness, the, the feeling of being connected, of, of just being overflowing with love and connection and peace, if I, can, if I can evoke those experiences in myself while I'm creating, while I'm in that creative process, then all of my decisions, all of the little micro movements while creating that track are going to be colored by those emotions, by those experiences. And so it becomes an imprint of the experience that I'm having while I'm creating that music. And if it's really high vibe, if I'm just having this like transcendent experience while I'm creating the music, then it's there. That, that same vibration is available. It's imprinted into the music and it's available to the, the people who are receiving it. Now, of course, the people who receive it, they need to be open and there needs to be enough space in, in their own being to receive that vibration, connect with it in a, in a deep and meaningful way. It's not just going to do that automatically. It's always a relationship between the emitter and the receiver. You know, this is also, a, it's just a fundamental aspect of sound and music itself, that, that this is always a conversation. It's always between these these two sides um but that's the best we can do we can intend we can put our energy into it and however people receive it however people perceive it um that's up to them but if 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 there is a depth there if there's something a meaning there that's part of our own process that can be received there's going to be some people who receive it and connect with it in the way that we felt, the, the way that we connected while we were in that creative process. So yeah, this is an incredible opportunity 
that we have here, using music to uplift ourselves and uplift others in the process. It's been an incredible journey for me. I'm, I'm super blessed to, to be doing this for a living, you know, to, I wake up and I come here to my studio and I, you know, I, it's just my life now is to, I, to go deep into these incredible experiences. And obviously it's not always incredible and, uh, inspiring. And, you know, there's experience, there's sessions that are just total, you know, banging your head against the wall. And that's, that's life, right? We have those, those waves and those rhythms, but the fact that I get to go on this journey, that I get to explore music with such uh, depth and, and that it's such a big part of my life is, is an incredible blessing. And, and to see all of the feedback from other people of how it's impacting their lives in a positive way, it's just a massive confirmation for me that I'm, I'm doing what I'm here to do. And um, yeah, it's, it's also an incredible confirmation of, of the, the capacity that music has to heal. And that's, that brings us to the sub point of this question, what is medicine music? Um, this is a term that's being used more and more frequently these days. And a lot of people, you know, everyone has their own definition and their own idea of what it is. Some people think it's, it's music that's uh, created with the intention of being used for ayahuasca or that it's created out of an ayahuasca experience, you know, having a connection to ayahuasca or mushrooms or some of these plant experiences. And then the, uh, the, the medicine music is what comes from that. Um, I have my own definition and I don't necessarily use this term because it, it means so many different things to different people, but I do like the idea of music as medicine. Um, so rather than it being music for medicine work, I really see music being medicine if we give it that intention and if we're creating with that intention. Um, so for me, it's, it's not actually so connected with the plants. The plants are just one aspect of it. I've had my own plant experiences over the years that have been transformational and, and really important in my life. However, the last few years, I've been sober. I don't use substances basically ever at this point. And so for me, the intention is that the music itself is the medicine and that the music makes us high, that the, the music makes us feel like we're on ayahuasca or like we've smoked a joint or any of these things that we do to feel more connected that the music can be that in itself rather than being an amplifier for some of these other substances. Um, so that's my own view. That's my own definition of, of, I guess, my form of medicine music or music as medicine. Um, and I guess that's also just a reminder that, you know, we need to be super aware of, of the vocabulary, the language that we're using and how we label things. And, um, you know, I had this conversation with my brother, who's a, a jazz, jazz musician and music teacher, a uh, saxophone player. So classically trained, you know, has gone really deep into music theory and is a really talented uh, sax player. And we talked about this concept of medicine music and you know, he asked me, he's like, what, you think jazz isn't medicine? You think jazz can't be medicine music? And it's like, certainly it can. I, you know, I really believe that any music can be medicine for the right person at the right time. And this circles back around to this all being a relationship, you know, it's resonance. It's one thing resonating with another thing. It requires both things to have resonance. It, something doesn't resonate with itself. Um, so yeah, death metal may be very healing and, and be considered medicine music for the right person at the right time. And what it really comes down to is again, our intention and, and why we're doing what we're doing. Are we doing this to help people heal? And in that healing, you know, bringing people into a, a deeper alignment, a, a greater sense of connectivity and peace and love. 
So the last part here is this question, when is it done? When is the track complete? And this has also to, to do with this idea of the North Star of finishing something, right? And the journey and the destination. And it's like, well, if we don't keep in mind the fact that, you know, there is also a destination in a way, then we're never going to release any music, right? Because it's never going to be done. We're always going to be on the journey. And that also is not in balance. So, um, yeah, just to, to also presence that and, and bring awareness to the fact that we are, you know, we are going to be done with whatever track it is we're working on at some point, hopefully. I still have tracks that I haven't finished, and maybe I never will, but I'm, I'm pretty good at finishing things. So something that I've encountered with some of my peers is perfectionism. And this is a double-edged sword because I think perfectionism and this idea of trying to really perfect what we're doing, that, that takes us really deep into what we're doing. You know, really we're, we can get into those details and we can create an element that just is so deep by itself because we've given it so much of our attention and energy. Um, however, if we just continually refine, 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 refine that one element, we're never going to have a whole collection of elements and this whole journey through all of this different music. Um, a lot of people get stuck in the mixing phase uh, with this perfectionist uh, idea because we can always try and make it sound better, you know, and this is something that we go into deeper detail and in, in the mixing module, but um, yeah, you you have to kind of just let it go at some point. It's never actually finished. It's It just gets to a point where it's good enough, you know, where it's something that you feel excited to share, where it's something that uh, sounds, let's say, 90% as good as it could sound and not worrying about getting that last 10% because there's always going to be another 10%. There's never... It's never 100% perfect. There's always something that you're going to want to tweak or change if you have that kind of mentality. So the, the main question I kind of ask myself as I'm getting towards the end of that process, you know, I, I, I'll just listen to the track as it's being close to, to done um, after I've arranged it and there's, you know, there's something to really just listen to. And I just see how I feel. And if the track makes me feel something special, then I know I'm almost there. And it's just the last little touches to, to really um, complete the process. But I'm really, I'm not spending a lot of time in those final touches. You know, it, I want to dive deep into all of the other creative aspects. And if I'm spending a lot of time on these little fine touches at the end, it means I'm not creating new music. And that's really the part that I love. Um, and maybe you are different and you, you really love doing those fine touches, which is also great. Uh, just be super aware of yourself and, and how far you go with that. And, and really, you know, um, just, being aware of, of what's important to you and, and what's really the most important about this track and how people are going to be interacting with it because the large, large majority of people are, are not going to notice those last 10% difference. So, um, again, it's just being, being aware. Okay, so listening is one of the most important things and it's something that I've been refining um, over the last few years. I, I really feel that we as artists, we as musicians, we're channeling, okay? So when we create something, it's not really us. You know, we, we as individuals are coloring that, that which comes through us. All of these inspirations, these ideas, it's coming from beyond us as individuals. And so I really, it's, it's, I mean, this isn't even belief, this is an understanding 
and I, I've, I've just experienced this to be true in, in my own life, that the best music is going to come through, is going to land when we get out of the way. So really, if you, if you like my music, if you like the music that comes through me, it's not because I'm a good musician. It's because I'm good at getting out of the way. I'm, I'm good at channeling, at allowing things to come through me. I'm good at listening. Um, and so this really becomes this kind of active and passive process where we're both opening and, and listening and allowing, but also doing, you know, uh, but there's some point there where as we're listening and as we're allowing things to come through us and then we're doing, and then we're listening, we're, we're doing that. It actually just becomes one unified process and you're not even necessarily aware of either thing as being separate. The allowing is the doing. And this, I think, is it's a really profound experience. And it's also going to result in the music being more profound for those who receive it. So this is this is a practice. This again, the, the paradox of this is you have to intend, you have to give it, you have to, to take the action to listen. Right. You have to actually say to yourself, OK, I'm going to listen, open myself. And for me, it's almost it can be like a prayer uh, to to ask for that guidance, to ask for this inspiration to flow through you and and really even praying for what you hope this music to accomplish in the world. You know, so it could be just as simple as, OK, I'm, I'm about to start this process. I'm going to open myself and listen as well as I can. I pray that whatever comes through me in this process will make the greatest possible impact on those who receive it, that it brings peace, that it brings a sense of connection and, and more love and light to the planet. And that just sets a foundation for the whole rest of your process. And then through the process, stop stop at, per, at certain moments because you can really get into it and you know you're doing 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 and you're not listening so much anymore so just giving yourself some moments to just stop and listen and you might actually hear the next step and this this is when i know i'm really connected to what i'm doing and, and really connected to the the music that's coming through is when i'm not even really having to think about what's next I'm hearing it already. It's like this internal sense of hearing that, oh, I, I know I didn't actually physically hear that, but I heard it. Like it's, it needs to be there. And so I do it. And that's such a beautiful way to, to create. So yeah, it's, uh, it's also, you know, it removes this burden of responsibility that, that, you know, we have to do it. We have to make this happen. It's like, no, just relax actually and let it happen itself so in more of a kind of like left brain philosophical approach there are some other uh, aspects that i always kind of have present with me to help guide my way and, and help me make decisions um, and it's all quite simple um, one of the main foundational principles that I'm, I always kind of have present with me is polarity and polarity, meaning kind of these two extremes, these, the swing of the pendulum, these two, uh, poles of our reality that exist in everything. And I think the sine wave here, which you can see below polarity, uh, kind of a stylized sine wave there. It's the sine wave is kind of the most fundamental sound, right? Uh, representation of sound, let's say. Uh, and, and in that sine wave is polarity. It is this contrast, the up and the down, the peak and the trough, the, the, you know, the, the space and, and the line. Um, so I think there's something very fundamental in this that has been really helpful for me to just always return to that, always kind of keep that close to me um, 
and I, I launch off of that for different ideas. So some of the different ways that we can manifest this polarity, these, this, this contrast in, in our productions is, for instance, breakdowns and drops. So my song structure, I, I don't follow any kind of regular song structure with uh, all of the, you know, the, the different sections that people generally uh, write into music. For me, it all just comes down to two breakdowns and and drops you know these more fuller um parts that really get you moving and the break breakdowns are really important as well because it's kind of more spacious it's um maybe not as rhythmic and it creates the contrast which makes the drops impactful if we just have a track full of drops it's flat it doesn't actually make an impact because there is no contrast and really our intros and our outros end up being like breakdowns. You know, we're, we're building into something and we drop. And because we've been building, because we've been, you know, creating tension, because we've been having kind of more minimal spaciousness, when that comes in with that impact, it, it really hits us more powerfully because we've been setting the stage for that to happen. Um, Another way to, to create contrast is just with vocals um, and instrumentals. So I love working with vocals. A lot of my tracks have vocals in them, but you don't want to have vocals the whole time because, again, um, it, it doesn't give space for the instruments, but also, you know, you're listening to a vocal the whole time, the vocal loses its magic. Whereas if you have these sections where it's just instrumental and you can kind of let go, of whatever the, the vocal is pointing towards, um, then when it comes back in, it, it makes more of an impact. And, and, and yeah, and it also creates more space to give attention to the instrumental uh, elements in the track. Uh, another contrast is between rhythm and melody. So we can be really melodically focused in certain instruments or certain sections of the song, and we can also be more rhythmically focused. So um, you'll see how this manifests in, in the next module with the, the structure of my template. You know, I have this kind of more groovy instruments and I have these kind of more swelling, melodic um, focused instruments. And I also do it with my, my bass lines. So I like to have more of a groovy, rhythmic um, based bass line and more of a, a legato kind of flat or melodic bass line. And yeah, tension release, we already kind of went over that as far as the drops and the breakdowns. You can build tension uh, with a lot of different things, you know, like filling the space with a, a wall of sound and then dropping into almost nothing, you know. So the breakdown can actually be full and the drop is empty. And again, it's just maybe maybe there's just the kick in the bass line. But, but because we've had so much sound... When we drop into that, it's super impactful, actually, because there's so much space. But at the same time, there's this high impact uh, combination of elements. So we can also create waves within the elements themselves, or, or the elements kind of become a, a representation of these waves. And yeah, the, the whole beat structure of the type of music that I, I like to make is, is really based on this, you know, where you have this steady kick. So you have obviously the pulse of the kick, no kick, kick, no kick. Then on top of that, you have the clap, every other beat. So kick, no kick, kick with the clap, no kick, kick, right? And so it's kind of creating a wave. And then on top of that, are the hi-hats, which are going on the offbeats and kind of accenting a different part of that wave. But it's this whole waving action that, that the beats are, are creating at the foundation of the, the music. We can do this also with percussion. So generally with percussion, I like to have these cycles where, um, you know, towards the end of a cycle, it, it uh, maybe gets more complex and you have a fill. Um, also just maybe there's one bar where it's like this and then the second bar has a variation and it kind of repeats with that variation. 
Uh, we can do this also with filtering. So I, I love this plugin, um, the Shaper Box, which allows you to actually draw in sine waves of volume automation or filtering, all just to give more of this kind of waving, um, contrasting experience. And yeah, so we don't, we, it's also good to be aware that we still want stability also. It's the waviness and the variety and, and the, the dynamic aspect is important. But also for me, what really is, is magic about this kind of music is the steadiness, you know, this, this continuous beat that, that for me puts me into a bit of a trance. It becomes this hypnotic experience. And yes, at the foundation of that beat, there is also this contrast. There is this polarity, but there's a steadiness to it as well. Um, one other way that I like to explore polarity is also through DJing. So I have all of my, when I'm DJing, when I'm playing other people's tracks along with my own, uh, I have everything organized in two folders, sun and moon. And basically that's, that's just to, again, create this contrast between more of a solar. So like African, Latin, sunny, uplifting, happy, smiley, sort of like major, uh, key type vibes. And then more of the lunar kind of deep introspective, um, yeah, maybe more of an oriental sort of, sort of vibe. And I find that weaving the set between these two energies, it again, it creates this contrast while at the same time having this, this hypnotic steadiness to it underneath. So this is super important for you. Um, and this is also one reason why I'm sharing this information. You know, I don't, I don't have any fear that you're going to take all of these things that I'm sharing with you and make music that sounds exactly like the music that comes through me, because you're not going to be able to, even if I gave you my computer with all of the samples, all of the instruments, everything on there, you wouldn't be able to create the way that, that I create. And this is beautiful. So really what, what it comes down to is you, finding your own sound, your own way. And the beauty in that is it's going to feel incredible to immerse yourself in that process because it's resonance. You know, you're creating this resonance through your interaction with Ableton and with your musical process that builds and builds and goes deeper and is part of also this mirror of your own self-development and, and your own unfolding process. And the deeper you go into yourself and into what you really resonate with, what really feels good for you, the clearer your sound will become. There is no trying to establish your own sound. It just happens by itself. I didn't try to establish this Mo's sound. I'm just being me. I'm just doing what I really love to do. I'm following my heart. And I'm cutting out all of the stuff that I don't like to do as much as possible. And that creates this beautiful vibration that other people connect with because it reminds them of their own unique resonance, their own unique vibration that feels good for them, right? So it becomes a mirror for them. And I hope that through this whole process and, and through the things that we've, we've explored even just today in the philosophy that you will connect with yourself deeper and that you will really find yourself in the process of creating music and that through that that process that you will offer something powerful to the world that it just becomes a chain where then they feel empowered and inspired also to to do the same in their own lives whether it's through music or any other creative activity, any other pursuit. But yeah, it's, you know, this authenticity and honesty with yourself, it ends up being 
one of these really important things to always keep close with, with you. You know, if you're in a process, if you're producing and you're making something, you're like, oh, now I need to do this and now I need to do that. And if it's, uh, if I, I kind of want it to sound like this, so now I need to do this and it's, it feels like work, it's, it's probably something to reevaluate and really examine to say, do I really need to do this right now? And do I want to? Um, you know, in my earlier, uh, days of producing, I actually, the first genre I was exploring was chill dubstep. I was super inspired after, um, uh, an experience I had at Burning Man in 2010 and it was dubstep at the time that was all over the place there. I had a really profound experience on the dance floor and basically I was inspired to start creating to, to bring about that kind of experience again for myself and, and for others. And um, so dubstep is very heavily reliant on sound design. So I was really, you know, watching tons of tutorials and really trying to figure out how to create all of these crazy sounds that I was hearing that were, you know, they really impacted me and really inspired me. But I just did not like doing it. I did not like going into a synthesizer and tweaking these things and trying to get something that sounds the way that I want it. And uh, it was, it felt like work. And that was a big revelation for me at some point when I realized, you know what, I'm doing this for fun. I'm just going to stop doing sound design and I'm going to focus on these other things that I like. And it's, that was really the beginning of making good music, I think, actually. Um, and of course, the music that was that was being created at that point changed. Um, and really, yeah, it, it became more authentic. It became more connected to me as my own individual and, and what I'm here to craft and to, to bring into the world rather than, you know, just trying to um, recreate something that's already there. <laughs>